Second piece of geometry, page 30. <clears throat> page 29 introduces the LA. That's not Los Angeles, that's leg angle theorem. If a leg and an acute angle of one right triangle are congruent to a leg and an acute angle of another right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So again, we have to uh, prove that we are dealing with right triangles. That's important. And then secondly, a leg and one of the angles. Okay, so obviously both of the other angles are acute angles. So I don't, to me that's redundant to put acute in there, but it is. So one leg and one angle, and then prove that they're congruent to a leg and an angle of another triangle. And you have proven that those two triangles are congruent. But we have to first make sure that we prove that they are right triangles. The first few proofs here on 29 and even page 30, even though you're doing it on separate paper, I, th I think they give enough information. There's only like one or two missing steps, and I don't think you'll find that to be too hard. Let's talk about this one on the bottom of page 30. All right, problem number uh, seven it is. <clears throat> So the first thing is obviously given, let's label what they tell us. AD is perpendicular to BC. So we know these are right angles. AD bisects BAC. So we have to take, we have to use this information to see what does that tell me? Well, if this bisects BAC, then this angle and this angle will have to be congruent. So we can, we can tell that, okay? Um, they want us to prove that this big triangle, ABC, is isosceles. Now, for it to be isosceles, by definition, two sides have to be the same length. So it looks like I'm actually going to try to prove that maybe AB is congruent to AC. So you kind of see where we're headed with that. For this to be for this to be isosceles, we have to have two congruent sides. So our goal, and it even tells us here, um, prove first of all that ADB is congruent to ADC. Okay, and then we can prove that AB is congruent to AC. And if that's true, then we know that um, by definition. Okay. There's one little step that's missing in there, and that is, you see, there's one side right here. We know that's congruent, and then that will give us, it looks like, leg angle. And obviously, that's what we're expecting to use, because that's what they just taught. So don't make it more confusing. You use what they just give you. So we're going to, we first say that, state that these are right triangles then we can state that uh, these angles are congruent, this side is congruent to itself, therefore by leg angle theorem, we can state that the triangles are congruent, and if the triangles are congruent, then we have congruent parts, okay? The corresponding parts are congruent. And then we can jump to our final conclusion. So again, I'm just giving you some of the highlights and hopefully decoding it a little bit so you can see what we're dealing with but I'm gonna let you fill in those blanks and fill out that proof. I wanna point out to you on the next page, the checkup, um, go ahead and look at it real quick and notice on page 31 that you do have to write out these um, practically word for word, okay? So be very careful with those. There's some definitions to match. Uh, then there are two rather lengthy proofs. They are very similar to ones that you have done, but I would encourage you before you just dive in to taking this checkup to kind of think through it, all right? And uh, maybe on a separate sheet of paper, mark what is given, what do I know, where am I headed with this, and how can I incorporate that proof you know, that they give me, all right? And it looks like, uh, especially this number 14 is a little different than some of the other ones that you have done. So don't just dive into it without thinking about it first, okay? And I hope you do well on that. And uh, almost heading into the last, looks like the last section of the pace after that. Well, we'll do a few more, a few more lessons. Uh, there are some challenging ones coming up here. All right.